What's up carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke and today we're going to cook some delicious but simple beef back ribs. These ribs are somewhat overlooked sometimes because when you look at them at the grocery store you're like those barely have any meat on them. Why would I even buy them? Well for one they're much cheaper and two they have a secret. Okay so let's have a look at them and I'll tell you what their secret is. See these bones? The reason that you can see these bones, which are typically called shiners, is because butchers shave as much of this off as humanly possible because the meat that they're shaving off of these ribs is what we in the carnivoristic world call ribeye steak. So what that means is what's in between these bones is ribeye steak. When you look at these and you see those shiners, you think, man, there's no meat on them. But with the meat, the gold in these is in between the bones and not on top of the bones, like what you see with short ribs or what some people call plate ribs. You've got nice, chunky, fatty, tender beef in between those ribs, which we're gonna cook down, render down. It's gonna shrink up like crazy, just like what you see with brisket or with plate ribs. It's gonna shrink up, it's gonna have a beautiful, juicy, delicious, beefy texture and flavor to it. And I'm gonna show you how to do it really quick, really easily. Go ahead, smash the like for me, subscribe to the channel. Y'all come over to American Smoke Carnivores sometime. It's a good group on Facebook. We'll see y'all in there. But let's get into how we're gonna prepare these ribs today. Step one, we're just gonna hit these up with a little bit of olive oil. I know some of y'all are thinking, oh, Zach, are you not gonna remove the membrane on the back? And the answer to your question, is no, I'm not gonna remove the membrane. You will see some people remove the membrane. You will see some people not remove the membrane. And the reason that I'm not removing the membrane, these ribs shrink up so much. They don't look good and they don't hold together good on these bones because you've got the shiners on the front. If you take the membrane off, you've got nothing holding them together on the back. For presentation purposes, I am going to leave the membrane on. Taking the membrane off doesn't necessarily expose me to a whole lot more meat anyway. And the meat that's on the front is going to get a nice coating of salt from the front. So I don't really have to worry about salt getting onto it. I am going to season this membrane, which some people don't do. I find membrane that is slow cooked. It's not gonna break down and dissolve, but it does have a nice little crunch to it sometimes. Y'all know about me, I'm a billy goat. I'm gonna eat it. And what I'm gonna do on the back side is we're gonna hit this up with just a little bit of light kosher salt. Don't be overly salty on this like you would with a thick set of plate ribs or with like some brisket because those are thick cuts of beef and they can handle heavy, heavy salt. This is more of a super thin cut of beef and you do not want to over salt it. Today for our black pepper, we're going to use some black pepper that I got from Lane's. Y'all know I love me some Lane's. I was out of black pepper the other day and I'm going to start making more Texas style barbecue. And so I, you know, I looked up on Amazon 16 mesh black pepper. The first thing that popped up was Lane's 16 mesh black pepper. And I thought, hey, I know a guy. And so I, I hollered at Lane's and they got this out here to me. And so thank you, Lane's. Don't be overly aggressive with it. Just get some black pepper on there. In case you're wondering, what is 16 mesh black pepper? If you're new to the barbecue world, maybe you haven't heard that term. And that is the size. That is the size of the grit of the pepper. The reason you wanna use larger grit black pepper on barbecue is because it captures more smoke. It helps to build a better bark on your barbecue. I'm gonna pat that on just a little bit and we're gonna flip this over get to the money side of these beef ribs. And if you wanna take the membrane off, take the membrane off, do it however you wanna do it. Just make sure that you season it, cook it, and eat it. That's the most important part. I hate when I slather with my right hand and season with my left. Y'all probably noticed Zach's doing kind of slow on that seasoning there. So just a, a generous but not heavy dose of the kosher salt over the meat. Hit it with that large grit black pepper. If I don't, I'm, I'm worried I'm gonna like sling it into my eyes or something. Dear God, I'm uncoordinated with my left hand. It's not looking bad though, because I'm, I'm, I'm seasoning from way up. You can leave it just like this if you want. This plus smoke is going to equal delicious, but we're gonna be hitting it up with a little bit more from Lane's. We've got their shake and steak. I've cooked a couple things with this so far and it's really good. It's got a very herby, it's got some uh, rosemary and stuff in there. So if you don't like that kind of stuff, do not put it onto your beef, but me, I do. I'm not going real heavy because I don't want it to be overpowering but it's got red pepper flakes, rosemary, garlic, pepper, red pepper, salt, all them sorts of things. I always look on the back of my labels, and if you look right here, you'll see that it's got 
10% of your sodium in there. And so when I see 10%, I think, okay, I can add a little light layer of straight salt to what I'm cooking as well, and it's not gonna be overpowering. Uh, sometimes rubs have 14, 15%, sometimes they're up as high as 20, but you always wanna look at that before you add whatever it is you're seasoning with to whatever it is you're cooking. Consider the thickness of the protein, and consider how much salt is in the rub and factor in whether you wanna add extra salt or not. I've got more on my table than I do on my ribs. That is that river wind, the dreaded river wind. We're gonna let that sweat on. We're gonna go over here to the smoker. I'm gonna tell you what I got going on in my pit. So in my pit today, I am burning a combination of the championship blend and some charcoal blend uh, in my hopper. That's gonna be my main smoke source. And then in my smoke tube, I have got some of B&B's post oak pellets burning, just so I can get a little bit more post oak, some of that Texas barbecue flavor onto these beef back ribs. I may come in from time to time and spritz them with a little bit of apple juice, but that's gonna be about it. Just watch your ribs, and if you see them drying out a whole lot, give them a little spritz, and that's pretty much all you need to do with these. Woo, come have a look. Man, yeah, that daggone Lane's shaking, steak and shake. I don't know what it's gonna taste like on here because I've never done this. Man, it looks beautiful. And we are gonna go ahead and wrap these up and let them rest. We are probing just over 200 degrees, give or take. But man, they are already tender like butter. I'm gonna double stack these on this heavy duty foil and we're just gonna wrap them up. This is just to get a little bit more of a tender result here in about an hour or so. We're gonna let these rest for about an hour. Let the temp come down to about that 145 degree mark. And then we're gonna cut them up and eat them. Okay, so it's been an hour since we took them out of the smoker. They've been resting, tenderizing slightly more, and getting just a little bit more perfect. So uh, they're done, and I'm going to tell you something. They're good. They're real good. If you want to do you some beef back ribs, I highly recommend this Lane's Shake and Steak. It is fire. I mean, fire. Look at this uh, thumbnail I did right here. <laughs> Super tender and juicy, just pull apart and the texture is exactly what I was hoping for. God, my, it's so good. I didn't know exactly how that rosemary and stuff was gonna go on this beef, but dear Lord, it's on it, doggone it. <laughs> we did cook these at 280 degrees throughout the cook. I think we kind of stayed below 280 most of the time, but they still cooked about an hour, hour and a half faster than I thought they were going to. What are you gonna do when the result is good? I'm still getting used to my new control panel. What are you gonna do? Sometimes you just gotta be happy when you get good barbecue at the end of the day. And this is mighty fine. Let me show y'all how to cut these. This is what you're looking for. The way you get that is you have to sacrifice some bones. For pork ribs, you would cut here, right? So on this beef ribs, what you wanna do is you start here, kind of curve around the bone. So that's what you get. And then you sacrifice this bone Try to stay as close to the bone as you can. Got a little gnawing going on there. You can gnaw that. I know I will gnaw that. None of that will go to waste. And then you go over and cut down in and around. Sacrifice the bone. Go in and around. That way you get like this juicy big bite as opposed to, you know, you don't get a lot of meat on top of these, but you get to plate these. And these are beautiful. Uh, these are exactly what I was hoping to get. If you have any questions, let me know. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to come by American Smoke Carnivores on Facebook. We'll see y'all in the group. Thanks for watching. Smoke on, and I'll see y'all in the next video.